We have to reconcile the highly accurate time system that uses atomic clocks with the less than accurate measurement of time that depends on the rotation of the Earth. For the same reason that we have February 29th in a leap year to keep human time synchronized with the seasons and with the stars so that holidays like Easter don't move around in the calendar and always stay in the springtime. Just one second every year or two can cause so much aggravation and discord. People have been arguing about it continuously now for six or seven years and there's still no sign of any agreement. The current definition is used by many people to meet a requirement that UCT1 is within one second of UTC and it would be very expensive for them to change. Because these seconds are expensive to program into satellites, so there's a lobby to abolish them. But this would break a lot of things, including how astronomers find things in the sky. Nothing in nature is perfect, and neither is the Earth. The gravity of the sun and the moon tug on the waters of the Earth to create the tide, which sloshes up against the continents and slows the Earth's rotation down. From the beginning of prehistory, man has watched the sun cross the sky and counted the days and the seasons, till eventually our understanding of the physics of the solar system is known so well that our calendar is more precise than the turning of the Earth itself. So that's basically what it is. It's just a man-made way. Because the Earth's rotation isn't constant as measured by an atomic clock, we have to make an adjustment every now and again to keep it uh, in synchronized. There is no reason to change the definition except for inconvenience. But it also reveals deep dysfunction in the family of astronomers, navigators, radio scientists, physicists, and software engineers. Dysfunction loves darkness. It is normal to be afraid of the dark. The family members you have to watch out for are the ones who are afraid of the light. So every so often they decide to add one in and that keeps things synchronized over hundreds and thousands of years, although we're only into 23, 23 of them so far. Humans care that the sun rises and the sun sets, that our moon is receding as the earth spins down is a charming fact of life in the solar system. The moon raises tides on the earth the tidal bulge of the Earth tugs the Moon, moving it further away. The Moon tugs the Earth's tidal bulge, slowing down the Earth's speed of rotation. So the length of the day grows longer by a thousandth of a second each century. The Earth is a clock, an atomic clock is a clock, and they don't run exactly in synchronism. To make them run in synchronism, you have to give one a kick. And it's the atomic clock, not the Earth, because that's impossible. The moon and the sun raise tides in the Earth's ocean. As the Earth rotates, these tides restrict the Earth's motion, slowing the rotation very slightly. The Earth's rotation is important for astronomers because we need to know which way the Earth is pointing because the coordinates of a star, for example, are given in terms of when that star is directly overhead Greenwich. Uh, if we don't update our clocks to reflect the rotation of the Earth slowing down, then uh, we'll be pointing our telescopes in the wrong direction. But for various reasons, we do need very accurate timekeeping. And our best atomic clocks now are better timekeepers than the Earth. Our clocks run slightly too fast for the speed the Earth goes round. So once in a while, we stop the clock for a second to let the Earth catch up. We've always defined time astronomically. Noon is the time when the sun is highest, as seen from Greenwich. The problem is the Earth isn't a very good clock. The friction between the tides raised by the Sun and the Moon slow it down. So there's seconds based on the Earth's rotation around the Sun. They're sometimes called elastic because they don't always have the same length because the time for the Earth to travel around the Sun is not always the same. It's possible and easier to keep time with seconds of fixed length, but every few years one needs to add or remove a second from this fixed time so that it coincides with astronomical time. In a sense, it's making sure that we understand how the Earth fits in with the rest of the universe. When in 1970, as a student, I attended the General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union in Brighton, and the discrepancy between the fixed length of the second and the fluctuating rotation of the Earth was already obvious. I have a watch that gains about a second a day, so after a week I reset the watch so it keeps perfect time. Is the device used to adjust the atomic clock to the mean or average time of the natural solar day. It's the brief grace period that we every so often grant to this tired earth that is being slowed down by a dragging moon so that it has a chance to catch up again. I am in charge of forecasting and announcing the leap second to be introduced in UTC.